שלום, שלום everybody, we are now starting בעזרת השם פרשת שמות, we are the Lopez family, Dallas, Texas, how are you everybody? I want to say thank you for the family that hosts this show to write, it's a lot of beracha and shefa. We're going to discuss today a lot of beautiful things about the parasha. Just remember last parasha, we spoke about parashat Bereshit, I'm sorry, from the book of Bereshit. Sefer Bereshit, the parasha is, uh, was uh, Vayechi. And the parasha ends with the death uh, of uh, Yaakov and Yosef. And we're starting a new book, Book of Shemot. So we were Bereshit, now we're Book of Shemot. There's a question I was asked the other day, and I asked that too. Yosef, after going through all what happened with his brothers, Throwing him, throwing him to the pit, going all the way to Egypt, become a servant, so forth and so on, selling them as a slave to Egypt. Do you think he forgave his brothers? What do you think, Barel? Do you think he forgave his brothers? He forgave them with all of his heart. Okay, so the Rabbeinu Bachya said there is no proof in the Torah that Yosef forgives his brothers. He told them, it's all from Hashem. He told them, I'm going to take care of you. He told them a lot of good, and he did. But the Torah doesn't say, he told them, Mahul, 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 three times I forgive you. And this is why Rabbi Nubach said, these neshamot of the tzaddikim has to reincarnate. And these are the ten haruge malchut, asara malchut, malchut. These ten great rabbis, Rabbi uh, Tadion, Rabbi Akiva, and his friends, died a horrible death at the days of the Romans. Each and every one of them has to rectify what they did to Yosef, their brother. Look from here, look from here that if there's nothing to rectify, if you forgive them, why they have to come back? We already talked about the idea of Gilgul. Okay? Fine. So, people think... Thank you. Just to give you a lot of money. I don't know if you give me a lot of money. People might uh, mistakenly think that the word Mahul, I forgive you. In Hebrew we say Mahul. You have to say it three times at least, right? They take it lightly. This is a grave mistake. You know, the Masechet Yoma, Dav Peizayin, the tractate Yoma, mentioned a story with Rav. Rav, whose name was Rav. The Rebbe, his name was Rav. Rav uh, went, once was uh, really hurt by the butcher, the butcher of the city. And he waited, he waited till Yom Kippur, that the butcher would come and say, I'm sorry, you know. And the butcher didn't come, didn't show up. So he says, you know what? Before Yom Kippur arrived, a day or two before, I'm going to pass by his store. He'll see me remember. I'm going to do like Hashem do. What Hashem do? Give us the 10 repentance day. The 10 repentance day between Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. He brings himself close to us so we can say, Hashem, I'm sorry. היי תודה רבה, תודה בלס. ברוך אתו אדוני, אלוהינו מלך עולם, שהכל נהיו בדברו. אמן. So, he went really close to his story, the butcher just saw him. He started to scream about the rabbi, Rav, get out of here, I have nothing, I have no business with you. This guy, the Talmud says, he was in the middle of chopping a cow, you know, the big bones. After he kicked the rabbi, the next thing he did, he hit the bone. A piece of the bone went through to his main artery here, and a shahita. He died instantly, losing blood from blood loss, okay? Punishment. Immediately from Shammai. What you could say, 
forgive, please, God, forgive me what I did. There was a story about the mother of Rabbi Yehuda Ptaya. They lived at the time of the Benish Hai. You heard about the Benish Hai? She has a neighbor. They gave her a hard time, so much hard time. It was unbelievable. Throwing garbage next to her door, living unclean, talking not nicely to her, screaming, complaining all the time. And the woman, the tzaddika, was silent. You know, if you're silent, when someone hurts your feeling, talking against you, you're silent. Uh, at the moments people insulting you, especially if it's in front of a lot of people, you can ask from Hashem for everything you want. You'll get it. I know it as a fact. So this woman that used to insult the tzaddikah, the righteous woman, one day she passed away. The day after the burial, she came to the Rabbani, to the Rabbitsen, in a dream. And she asked her, please forgive me for what I did to you. I am in a great suffering. She told her immediately, Mahul, Mahul lach, Mahul lach, Mahul. Mahul, I forgive you. Uh, she did it from all her heart. The next night, she came to her again in a dream. Please say you forgive me. I just did. She did it again. You know, what I'm telling you now, it's a very rare story. It doesn't happen often. And she took it seriously, of course. She said again, Mahulach, Mahulach, Mahulach. The third night, she came again. She said, Bibakasha, please say you forgive me. She said, but I did. And again, the fourth time, she said, this is, that's not gonna, that's not gonna, uh, ends that uh, that way. So she went to Rabbi Hacham Eliyahu. Eliyahu was the Abba, the Abba of the Benish High Rabbi Yosef Haim Zechutu again. She told him the story and she say, he said to her, You take 10 people to this, to her grave. There you saying, yeah, You forgive her. She did it. She took a minyan. They went to the grave. And they gave me still fresh, four days. It was on the fifth day. She said to the to the to the ground. It's not just the body there. And then Shama can see. She said, I forgive you, forgive, forgive. From Shama in the side. The next night she came to her and she was she said she looks smile and a lot of light. And she was holding two bowls in her hand. One was with clear water, and the other one was with green beans. It's called lubia. She woke up in the morning, first thing, he went to Hacham Eliyahu. That's what I did, and it was the dream the next night. He told her, you know what, for what you did, it's like, first of all, it's a good sign. Secondly, you are going to have such a great baby boy that will light the world with his wisdom. And soon after, she got Hacham Rabbi Yehuda Ptaya, very famous rabbi of many, many rabbis in Yerushalayim. For what? Didn't hold grudge. Forgive. And she make all this effort. What she could do? Eh, hey, don't come to me in a dream, honey. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> she can come a million times in a dream. Huh? I need to go to the grave to say, I forgive you after what she did to me all these years? Forget it. Let her burn in hell. <laughs> in Gehinnom. Hell is not a bad word. People are afraid from this word. It's a word that people need to know what it is. It's a stage before Ganaed and Gehinnom. It's out of Hashem's mercy we have Gehinnom. So the Neshama will not vanish forever. It's a prison for the Neshama for a certain time and then it gets clear. Anyways, Yosef didn't tell his brothers, Mahul, Mahul, Mahul. He had to come back. This parasha starts parashat Shemot from the book of Shemot. Ve'ele Shemot b'nei Yisrael, abayim tzvayimah. 
את יעקב איש ובית אורו באו לתורה tell us again the numbers and the names of the tribes that came to Eretz, to Eretz Mitzrayim, land of Egypt. Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zizrun, Natali, Gad, Asher, Yosef, Benjamin. Then he says 70 people. And we're asking a simple question. Why I had to count them again? The Torah already mentioned them, the Parsha before. Why to mention them again? It's like, you know, you're counting something you like. You, you have a special and precious stones. So every once in a while, you take them out and you, you can have it. Yeah, well, I have 17. Huh? Yeah, you have to look at it. You have money. You have to count money. What do you count? You count things you like, you love. Showing the righteousness of these people, how, Hashem, how much Hashem loves them. Counting them again. Nevertheless, the Torah is very stingy with words. Hashem want to show them how much He loved them. How much He loves us. Now, the story in the parasha tells us that all the tribes, the head of the tribes, the names you mentioned, passed away. Levi died at the age 137, and Yosef 110. Yosef, Levi, among his brothers, lived the longest life, and Yosef the last days and years, 110 only. He was supposed to live up to 120. But remember what we mentioned last time? Because he heard the words, our father, your servant, our father, your servant, 10 times. He lost one year for each time. Now, after they passed away, all these great people, the game changed, the rule of the game changed. The next Pasuk says, in Pasuk Chet, 1.8, says, Vayakom melech hadash al Mitzrayim, shelo yada et Yosef, a new king. Now the Mepharshim debating if it's really, it was a new king, or just a king that changes his uh, decrees. New king saying, he born, at the time when Yosef was in the pit, Yom who led the Paro, so he's supposed to be around 80 years old now, because Yosef ruled for 80 years. Some says it's the same king, just when the brothers passed away, he changed the rules now. Now I want to go against Israel with all force, with all power. You know, there's one word that Hashem doesn't like. And we have in the Torah many places in the Tanakh, in the Bible, reminders from King Solomon to be careful with that. And it's called Kfiyut Tova, ungratefulness. How is that related to what we're saying? Simply, all the hardship starts, the decree starts, and all the taxes and, and the, the torching and the suffering after the brothers died. So far of his, I don't owe them anything. Yosef, that saves the country. He saved Egypt as an empire. Make them the country that was the, the, the richest country in the world. All the money went to Egypt and through Egypt. It was famine. Ra'av in the entire world. And which time is providing. It was running the country successfully. Instead of saying, thank you, we appreciate, giving medals, trophies, some certificate to put on, you know, in frames, to appreciate the Jewish people, to be friend with them. They did exactly the opposite. As soon as the last brother died, Levi, boom, changing the rules. We're going to kill them all. We're going to go against them. Horrible decrees. Horrible decrees. But remember, you're not running the world. You don't run this world. There is God above. You want to be ungrateful? 
I'm going to show you.